Hello friends, in previous classes we studied about the different types of semiconductor and their of course classification. Now there is more to it. If you take a closer picture, you will realize semiconductors are also classified as direct band semiconductors and indirect band semiconductors. Let's look at a closer picture in this session. So let's begin. <music> To start with direct band semiconductors and indirect band semiconductors, we will first take a closer picture of what exactly involves in the semiconductor and what is the mechanism that takes place inside it. Now as you know in a semiconductor there is a collision of electrons and holes which leads to the formation of current. Now in a simple language you can say that in previous classes as you have realized an electron jumps from the valence band to the conduction band so that it can generate electricity but the possibility of the electron from the valence band to conduction band is studied under this clause but the possibility of electron jumping from the valence band to conduction band is not that easy as it appeared there. It has more detailed instructions to it. Now if you see these red dots represent electrons. Now assume both of the electrons have same momentum. When I say they have same momentum of course it means they have same energy. The electrons with same energy will recombine. Now as you can see in the first case the electrons have combined and the second case even the electrons were having same momentum they did not combine or you can say in first it wasn't head on collision or pure collision but in second there were no collision at all. Now it's very simple to realize that of course the electrons were not in the same line of sight how can they collide? Well this is the key aspect of direct and indirect band semiconductors. As in the case of direct band semiconductor there is an head on collision wherein indirect band semiconductor if you try to just collide the electrons there won't be any head on collisions or in short there won't be any action taking place in that semiconductor. Now how to deal with this? Well again let's take the same example. But first in this you note that for the electron which cannot perform a head on collision you need to first align that electron. So this is how it is done. This electron is sent to the aligning position but when it actually comes to the alignment it releases photons. The yellow colored lines you can see these are nothing but as photons. These photons are released. So you can say your energy is released in two way. First the energy is sent in the form of photons for alignment and then post alignment the energy is obtained as well. So in the second case now both can have a head on collision as you can see. Right now so this is basically a direct band and an indirect band semiconductors basic key concept. Now graphically it can be represented as this is for direct band semiconductors and this is for indirect band semiconductors. Here you can see this is the valence band, this is the valence band as well, this is the conduction band and this is the conduction band as well. In direct band gap semiconductors you can see the energy gap is almost the same as an indirect band gap. But you can see the maximum of valence band here and the minimum of conduction band here are aligned in one particular direction or one particular line of sight. Whereas this is not in the case of indirect band semiconductors. Right? So in direct band semiconductors you always have to make sure that the alignment is proper whereas in the case of indirect band gap semiconductor the conduction band is offset with a certain distance. This k is called as the collision coefficient. Now an important question for your university exam distinguish between direct band gap semiconductors and indirect band semiconductors. So the points are. The first point of course is the maximum energy of VB aligns with the minimum energy of CB. VB stands for valence band and CB stands for conduction band. 
whereas in the case of indirect band semiconductor you will have maximum energy of VB misaligns with the minimum energy of CB. Now this is the most important point. Well in exam the first point that you need to draw is the diagram. So always remember in case of the question between direct band gap semiconductor and indirect band gap semiconductor you always make sure to draw the diagram on the individual sides as the very first point and then continue with the second point from here is the second point the direct combination takes place with the release of energy equal to the energy difference between the recombining particles well that is true because if your alignment is already there then the only energy released is the energy released by the recombining particles whereas in the case of indirect band gap semiconductor you know the first energy is the energy released which is spent in realignment so the momentum is conserved by the release of energy and only after both the momenta align themselves then only the recombination energy is released. The probability of radioactive combination is high in the case of direct band semiconductor of course because the alignment is already there whereas in the case of indirect band gap semiconductor this probability is low. You can say the efficiency also is higher in the case of DBG semiconductor and the case of IBG semiconductor the efficiency is lower. The examples for DBG semiconductors are gallium arsenide semiconductors and the IBG semiconductor are silicon and germanium. Well, if you notice we had earlier given the examples of silicon and germanium as the pure semiconductor. Well, these are of course the pure semiconductor but there is a certain level of discontinuity in them. The discontinuity is because of they are IBG semiconductors. Because of being IBG semiconductor they are not used wisely as we talked in the previous class. We have synthesized new semiconductors such as gallium arsenide which is an alloy of gallium and arsenide as a semiconductor just for the reason that it is a direct band gap semiconductor. So always make sure this could be a question for your viva why is direct band gap semiconductor important as compared to IBG semiconductors. So in IBG semiconductor there is always a certain loss of energy because of the energy spent in alignment which is not in the case of direct band gap semiconductor. Thank you so much for watching this video. For more content stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.